Hello, in this video we're going to talk about how to complete an assignment on the WLC Moodle course. Okay, to begin with, go to wlcmoodle.drake.edu and then log in. You can either log in by going to the upper right hand screen here and clicking on the login button, or by clicking down here and going to the login block. You'd use your Drake ID. I have a test account, so that's why it comes up with this. And then once you log in, you're going to see a list of courses. Now, most students are only going to see one course, but you may be taking multiple languages, and so you would see two courses. Um, let's click on this course. So your course is probably laid out something very similar to this. This course is, uh, only has a few things in it, but I wanted to point some uh, out how to complete an assignment. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at assignments. And we'll notice that there's a writing assignment, a, uh, there's drafts, there's speaking assignments, there's project proposal projects, midterm exam, portfolios, etc. Um, these assignments will look the same when you actually get into them. What you'll have to pay attention to is what type of, of assignment it is and pay attention to the directions for the actual assignment so that you know what to do in order to complete it. Okay, so for this example, let's go down here and click on Writing Assignment 1 Draft. Okay, so what you'll see is you'll see any information that your instructor has given you. It says, please turn in a draft of your first writing assignment here. Consult in the writing assignment rubric for information. Let's take a look at that. So whenever you have any of these assignments, you'll be able to look at the grading rubric and how you're going to be scored for the assignment. So let's click on that. So this is a PDF document. It may load in your browser. It may download depending on how you have your browser configured. But what you'll notice is that uh, this is the rubric for the writing assessment. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five criteria, content, grammatical accuracy, vocabulary, organization, and mechanics. Um, if you total these points up, they're going to total up to 100. And so if you want to get the best possible grade, you're going to need to meet the A, um, qualifications for each of these categories and that's this column here and then if it's anything less it sort of explains to you um, what, like if you were to get a C for grammatical accuracy these are um, some of the indications of why you'd be getting a C okay so let's go back um, that's just the rubric so if we want to actually start an assignment we're going to click on add my submission and then we're going to see um, either one of two things. We're going to have an online text, uh, file submissions box, or both. Um, de really depending on what your instructor wants, if they want you to type the things in line, you can open up in a document and then cut it and paste it into here, or you can submit a document. It really depends on what your instructor asks you to do. So um, everybody knows how to enter text in here. Right? So you can do that, or you can upload a document. Now, um, in a different video, and I'll put the URL up in just a second, I talked about how to use repository, so I'm not going to go into that too much, but I'm going to show you that you can submit a document in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, drag a document that I've prepared over onto this. All right? So I'm going to, it says generic document, that's my first draft, I'm going to hit save changes. Okay? Now I'm not done yet. Um, and here's the, uh, the reason why. Uh, let's say that this assignment's done on Friday, or due on Friday, excuse me. And we have some time on Tuesday to work on it, but we're not really ready to turn it in yet. So we go on Tuesday, and then we'll do some modifications, especially if we're doing the online part. And then we're going to save it, which saves it inside of the course, but it doesn't submit it to be graded to the instructor yet. So now we're going to come back on Thursday and finish the assignment. And uh, so we'll click on edit my submission and we'll get right back in there. We'll be able to modify. So we'll put in more text, All right? And now we can add to that file submission. So this could be, here's a, in this example, here's a document you want to turn in. And you could put in here, uh, I wasn't sure about this part of the assignment. Um, will you please make note of that and, and, and give me some suggestions on how I can improve that? You could write that in. Um, and then you click save changes. Notice that now uh, my changes that I've made there are ready to go. And so the last thing that you need to do uh, to actually turn the assignment in is to submit assignment. And then it says that, are you sure you want to submit? Yep, continue. Now notice that there's no edit buttons here uh, at this point because what's happened is that you've turned it over to the instructors to be graded. I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to show the instructors what it looks like uh, when the students 
submit an assignment and how they grade it, and then we'll come back and we'll show you what it looks like once your assignment's been graded. Okay, instructors. So what we've done now here is we have a student that submitted a work and we want to take a look and see what they've done. So in this browser I'm logged in as a student. Let me switch over to my instructor view. All right. So I'm going to go to uh, my course and I'm going to look at my assignment. Now the easiest way to grade an assignment is to actually click on the assignment that you're grading rather than going to the grade book because then it'll list all the students there and it'll put in, it'll show you the work that they've submitted. So we're going to click on writing assignment draft one because that's the assignment that we're working with and then we're going to click view and grade submissions. Now notice before we do that that it shows us that there are two participants and one participant has submitted an assignment. Now just because you grade one student's assignment doesn't mean that you can't go back and grade another student's assignment later so that you can grade these um, student by student. Okay, So we're going to click on uh, view grades and submissions. All right. So what we see is we see T student rather than test user has submitted an assignment for grading. They did this Friday, uh, August 31st at 12:51 uh, p.m. Okay. If we want to see what they've submitted, we can look here, and it has uh, they've put in text and more text. So that's the text that they've actually put in line. But then there is a document that they've linked for us to look at. So we'd click on that, and we download it, and we'd open it up, and then we'd review what they have um, to say in there. So. That's how we look at what they've done. So how do we grade this? Okay, what we do is we click on this checkbox here, and this is uh, grading for this particular student. So we're going to click on this, we're going to click grade, and what this does is this brings up the marking guide. Now notice also that uh, we can click directly on that and have access to the document that the student has submitted and any text that they've put in line, text, images, videos, whatever, um, and we have access to the marking guide. Now the marking guide is set up such that uh, it takes the A column, the best possible work that's available uh, from the rubric and gives it to us as the marking guide. And so instead of having four different columns, now we have a single column and we can put any uh, point value we want uh, up to the maximum for that particular criteria. Okay, so like in this one, let's say content. Uh, let's give them 20 out of 30 in this one. You can see needs to be longer. All right, but in the rest of the stuff, they did pretty good. So let's give them a 20. 20, a 20, and a 10. Now you can put in comments and give them uh, encouragement about what, what they did or what they need to work on or however. And then um, once you've commented accordingly and given the students a grade, we're going to hit Save Changes. And what this does is this, this marks a grade for the students so that they can go back and look at it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch back to the student view, and um, we're going to allow, we're going to show you what it looks like when the students get a grade that's been submitted. Okay, so here we are as a student. Um, we've submitted an assignment. I'm just going to refresh this page so I can see what's gone on, and um, we'll notice that uh, immediately that we'll see a grade. So as a student, instead of just having, okay, I got 90 out of 100, right? If we didn't have a marking guide, we wouldn't know why that constituted 90 out of 100. Maybe there's a little bit of information that comes along with that, but maybe not. But with the marking guide, what we can see is we can see exactly where we were um, deficient in. So according to my instructor for this assignment, that uh, my content needs to be longer. But everything else I did pretty good. I got 20 out of 20 here, 20 out of 20 here, 20 out of 20, and 10 out of 10 here. So overall, I did pretty well, but I need to work on you know the, th the things that my instructor said that I needed to work on. OK, so that's how you um, complete an assignment how it's graded, and how it gets turned back into the student for review.